Day 10 of the 14 day countdown to the CFA level one May window. We are on the cusp of the weekend before the window. Always an exciting time. Uh, today's topic, EPS. We're going to look at a calculation of diluted EPS. Slightly different approach. Going to take an example of a question from our QBank because it's one that's historically less than 50% of people have got right. And there's a lot of comments on it on our site saying, whoa, what's going on here? So let's take a look and we'll use this to more generally talk about the calculation of diluted EPS. So here is the question. A lot of information. I would say this is a long question for level one, usually probably shorter than this. But given a long question, my technique, I always want to see right at the end, what am I going to be asked to do? So I go right to the end and I see, OK, here we go. Diluted EPS for the period. So that's what I need. Diluted EPS. Formulas. Got to have this in your head. We're going to start with basic. Net income minus preferred divs. It is earnings available to shareholders. That's the net income less what we have to pay our preferred, preferred shareholders. And it's divided by the number of shares in issue. We don't have any shares issued or repurchased during the year in this question. So have to look at another question if you've got issues there. Here, what we're interested in is adjusting for convertible debt. So what do we have? That formula I've given you is your basic. That's basic EPS. To adjust and get diluted, all we ever need to do is on the top, add in the good news. That's going to be your savings. And on the bottom, add in the bad news. That'll be the shares that you have to issue. It's bad news when you add to the bottom because you're increasing the denominator. On its own, that would drag the ratio down. It's good news in the numerator because you're adding to the numerator. On its own, that drags it up. Obviously, you have to look at the relative impacts of the two to decide overall, is it going to drag basic EPS up or down? Now I'm prepped for the question. Let's take a look. We've got uh, Sacrum Co., a small triangular bone at the base of your spine, just above the coccyx, from the Latin sacred bone, if you are interested in that kind of thing or concerned uh, about what it meant. Uh, reported 310 million euro in revenue and 139.5 euro in operating income. Look, I need net income. I've got two figures here, revenue and operating income. Operating income is closer to net income, so I don't need that. I'm going to get rid of revenue. Now I've got 139.5 OI in their 2017 Q1s. Further analysis revealed effective tax rate is 15%. I would need that if I had convertible debt. Not relevant if it's pref divs, not relevant if it's options, relevant if it's convertible debt. There are 37.2 euros, uh, sorry, million euros of, here we go, 7.5% convertible bonds. That allows me to calculate interest. I do need my tax rate. During the reporting period, Sacrum had 46.481400 weighted average shares. There you go. This is what you'll typically see in a level one question. They're not going to give you every single adjustment to do for diluted EPS in one question. It's too much. So some things they'll make you calculate. Some things are just gifted here. Shares and issue was gifted. If Sacrum's bonds are convertible at 20 euro per share. OK, that's not what I'm used to seeing. Usually I see how many can convert or what's the conversion ratio. Here you're told a value. OK, well, I know the total value and I know the value per share. I, I can do a calculation there. That's I, I don't do that kind of calculation often, but it's pretty straightforward. Calculate diluted EPS. OK, I will. Well, what strikes me is I have this. There is absolutely no mention of preferred dibs. If there's no mention of them, I don't want to make them up. They're not there. Let's just ignore them. So I need net income. I have the number of shares. I need to calculate the good and the bad news. So the unusual thing in here is I don't have net income. What do I have? I have operating income, the absence of anything non-operating. That's just EBIT. That is 139.5. Now, what I could opt to do here, I'm going to do this because your brain might work like this. I could say, OK, I've got operating income. I need net income. So it's EBIT. Let's knock off interest. The only debt that's mentioned is the convertible bond. And again, if I've not mentioned any other debt. I'm not going to make any up and bring it in. So let's work out the interest. 37.2 million. So I'm working here in millions, you can see. 37.2 million of 7.5% convertible bonds. That is interest of 2.79 million. That would give me earnings before tax of 136. 71 tax is at, I saw an effective rate somewhere, there it is, 
20.5065. I'm not saying you'd go to this many DPs in the exam, but obviously I don't want any rounding errors to throw you off here. So after interest, after tax, that I think would be a decent net income figure. Uh, 1162035. Now, if we've got net income, we can calculate our basic and diluted. What do we have? Net income, 1162035 million. And weighted average shares in issue, 46.4814 million. Feel free to write it out in full. I'm just doing it in millions. That's your basic EPS. Comes to $2.50 per share. Now, let's add in the good news and the bad news. On the top, we are going to add back the good news, the interest saving. We save interest, and happily, we've already calculated it. But remember, when you save interest, you would pay more tax. So we're going to have to 1 minus T it. So we're going to add back. What did I calculate the interest was? 2.79 into 1 minus T. T is 15%. So 0.85, 1 minus T. On the bottom, I'll add in the number of shares that are going to get issued. Let's just do a calc here. If there's 37.2 million in total, and for every 20, we issue a new share, that's 1.86 million. That is 1.86 million. Now, just for fun, I'm going to work out here the savings per share issued. That comes to 1.275, which is less than the basic EPS. Basic EPS says I'm earning $2.50 for every share in issue. If there was a conversion of this debt, I would save 1275 for share every share in issue, which means these items are going to be dilutive. These items, this convertible debt is going to be dilutive. So I'll go ahead and I'll calculate. I get 118575 million on the top divided by 48. 0.3414 on the bottom. That's a diluted EPS of 245. And you're done. So remember, add in the good news, add in the bad news. If you want to isolate potentially dilutive securities, check how much they save per share issued. And if that is less than basic EPS, as it is here, they are dilutive. That works for convertible debt, it works for convertible prefs. For your options, you need to use the treasury stock method. Now, tiny little aside on this question. I went through this big calc here, which was absolutely fine. But you were given operating income already. 1.3, sorry, 139.5 million was your OI, which in the absence, as we said, of non-operating items is EBIT. Well, look what we did here. We added back interest after tax. So this figure here, that is handily already before interest is pretty useful to us because we want earnings before interest, but after tax. This is earnings before interest. Well, let's just tax this. If you tax this 139.5, one minus T it to tax it. So multiply it by 0.85, you get 118.575. You don't need to do it that way. Going the long way around and adding it back was fine, but obviously this saves a little bit of time and just shows if you understand the income statement, you can think around all these numbers, you know where they come from. You can of, often rather get to questions a little bit quicker. But that's a technique for diluted EPS. That's how I'd attack that question. Bit of a meaty one. As I say, less than 50% of people get that right on the site. So if you are getting that right, you're understanding that, you're in pretty good shape.